committee meeting, the first one of 2022. <laughs> um, the, uh, you got the uh, brief little info that I sent out. Uh, yeah. I'll go through that. Uh, unless, Bob, we have anything left over from previous uh, meetings or from anything? No, the only oh, I didn't prepare the minutes from our one meeting that we had back in September. All right, okay, that's all right. Well, let's let's uh, get on to let's get on to this. Uh, apparently, the uh, Massachusetts State Building School Building Authority uh, in January uh, released uh, information that they have money available in the open period where towns could towns cities could apply for funds. Um, the uh, town has until uh, April 29th to apply, and uh, what would be applying for would be um, the schools have asked uh, for consideration for a renovation, complete renovation of the junior senior high school. The process works that uh, a town first has to authorize a, a, a feasibility study. And to do the feasibility study, you have to hire a project manager, you have to hire an architect uh, to work with you on a feasibility study. And if um, you do a feasibility study uh, uh, and then uh, that is approved by the state, then you would move on to construction phase. But to do a feasibility study, uh, you have to have you have to have the thing uh, agreed to be funded, and uh, the uh, the MSBA has to agree with the project that you are looking at. Those are the usual kinds of things that we've gone through in the past for feasibility studies. So the immediate question is, uh, sh would uh, what is our what is our uh, opinion, um, or what are our thoughts about the possibilities of a feasibility study for Granby that would be a feasibility study of renovating the junior senior high school? should be submitted uh, during this period to the state. Um, the further, inf further financial information background that uh, we were given was that the uh, two estimates of what a feasibility study would cost, and again, you've got to hire a lot of outside people to help you do this, is between one and two and between two and three million. So it's $2 million plus or minus for the feasibility study. Uh, that would be reimbursed at the same rate as the project itself would be reimbursed if the project is approved by the MSBA. If the project is not approved by the MSBA or if you come to the end of the feasibility study and the town does not approve uh, funding of the uh, project, then you do not get any reimbursement for the feasibility study um, and you pay for the whole thing yourself. In past years, vote has been taken at a town meeting to take money out of stabilization funds uh, usually to fund the feasibility study um, which takes a two-thirds vote uh, this year it turns out that um, when we built the when we re built and renovated the uh, east meadow complex new east meadow complex the town authorized um, borrowing for more money than it actually cost us to uh, get into the project so there is money left over in that fund. Uh, the proposal is being considered that the town would be asked to switch the authority for spending that money from the East Meadow complex to this feasibility study. I do not know what that requires for a vote. I think it, I would be pretty sure that could take place at a town meeting. Uh, I don't know if it requires a two thirds vote or a 50% vote. It's interesting because if it, in, in either case, although the money was authorized, uh, was not spent on the school, it will mean that we will have a tax increase uh, without having to vote for it at the ballot box, uh, and if it can be done at a town meeting. But again, I'm, I don't know, I don't know all the ins and outs yet of what that would mean. So <clears throat> there is a possibility, though, that uh, something short of a, a town meeting, <clears throat> of a town ballot vote for raising taxes could cause us to raise taxes um, for the feasibility study, but that's one of the proposals being looked at. Um, so uh, with that as the introduction, um, 
open to any suggestions. I'll make uh, one other comment that we had brief conversations and uh, I suggested that the, the renovation project is described as, as this. The high school, junior, senior high school is over 90,000 square feet. Um, current costs for renovation today are in the $600 per square foot range. That does not take into account possible inflation uh, for this, this fiscal year, calendar year, next fiscal calendar year, and not even sure it takes into consideration what the inflation has been over the last few months. So it's uh, $600, $600 and up per square foot, which means um, a cost of a project in the uh, $54, $55 million range. MSBA funding could go up to 60%. Uh, it's been the case for us in past years, but the reality is that the funding has come in more in the low 50s. So at any rate, I think we'd have to be prepared uh, to pass an override vote to borrow, say, between 24 and $27 million. Uh, we borrowed $16 million for the East Meadow project. Um, again, we have more borrowing authority than that. I think the borrowing authority was maybe $19 million, something like that. But if we borrowed $16 million. This was resulted in the, the current costs uh, carried in the budget are over $800,000 for paying back that uh, $16 million, which means if if we borrow, if we borrow uh, 12, if we have to borrow um, one and a half times that of $24 million, that we could be looking at a uh, 1.2 million per year increase in taxes, which is based on the current amount of taxes we're collecting is probably close to about a 10% tax increase to pay for uh, such a project. So, uh, again, as we would get closer to any kind of town meeting that would have to make a decision on that, those estimates would be would be sharpened up. But um, from what information we have today, uh, it looks like the project could cost a 10% increase in taxes. Um, so I, I raised the question of, um, of what else is under consideration, including uh, is there any consideration being given to make a concerted effort with appropriate uh, negotiating people and, and from and, uh, from the town uh, to try to uh, either regionalize uh, with another school district, join another regionalized school district, uh, work out an arrangement where another school takes uh, students from, uh, through the school choice process? Um, uh, temporary classrooms as being permanent structure, uh, things that are not going to cause a 10% increase in taxes by any means. And uh, because I personally, I don't know how you feel, but personally, I would think that after the rest tax increase for the East Meadow uh, project, it would be very, very difficult to get the town voters to vote for a 10% tax increase. And uh, I would hate to start this project off uh, and um, just basically throw away the first $2 million uh, because we know we would have no hope of getting a $10 million, 10% tax override without studying what plan B, plan C, or options B, and option C, and options D might be and have some kind of discussion of that, which might even mean that uh, although we wouldn't necessarily say that the uh, renovation project shouldn't be studied, it would say that it shouldn't be studied this year. That if Granby wants to think about this question, it should start off on the much broader question of should we continue to run a junior senior high school or should we be exploring other options? And then the follow up question is that if we want to do a, if we want to continue to fund a junior senior high school, what is the appetite for saying, well, it's going to have to be through temporary classrooms because nobody's going to pay to do the, to do the uh, renovation of the junior senior high school. Um, so there's some, there's some real thorny issues here to think about and to uh, discuss. So I'll, I'll throw it open to the floor for comments. Let me, let me throw in a couple of things where I differ a little bit with you, John. Or, okay. Um, to begin with, the reason we, John and I were in, in this meeting with Chris and, uh, and Sullivan 
was because the state pretty much has told the school people that without support of all the the whole town which would include the finance committee they aren't going to approve the project so i guess you might say that puts us in a somewhat strong position but in any event it means that they're coming to us for that reason to get our support um you mentioned renovate the school but if you remember john they also threw out the possibility that it might come out to be a new school correct which would which would be more dollars um the numbers that you mentioned as to the way it cost um and and the consequential or i guess it's consequential subsequent tax increase um is based upon the funding we have now but the interest rate we got now is probably a good deal less than we might be facing a couple of years down the road if inflation continues to to go along we got a, we got real good rates and you know if you throw in a two or three percent increase in uh interest rates from what we had before up of uh 20 25 million dollars you're you're adding up to some extra serious uh, money and i'm not sure about that the use of the leftover proceeds um from the east meadow school and, and there's two parts i think there's two parts to the question number one is could you use the borrowing authority to pay for this particular thing and 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 the state has some rules as to what um unspent bond money can be used for and generally speaking it's for a similar purpose whether or not a feasibility study on a different um building would be involved i don't know but if you remember i looked them up the the vote was very very specific as to what that money was to be used for i mean it spelled out every single little detail along the way so you've got the question then i go one step further and that is that was paid for by a debt exclusion and the debt exclusion override was very specific as to what the town was agreeing to override for they weren't agreeing to override for 15 million dollars or 25 million dollars whatever the number was it was to build a build that new school building and renovate east meadow so it, it to me it's touch and go as to whether or not um the override would apply to apply to the payment of this money in other words it could be we you don't have to you you, you switch the money but you have to switch the financing of, of that too those are my those are my the things where i in in details that i think are maybe a little bit different than um what you said john okay yeah, yeah I, I agree with i agree with all those things so it was maybe a little too broad in my thing it it it, it, it was proposed to us that um the uh authority to borrow money for east meadow would carry over um with the unused funds but uh we didn't have a lot of discussion on anything that might stand in the way of that it was uh it was on the uh just that this this is one way that we might do that uh without having any kind of determinative conversation about whether that was possible so uh, and, and yeah. by so, so doing it what what you end up with is the the implication anyways that it wouldn't going to be wouldn't cost us anything right yeah and, whereas uh, if the override doesn't apply to to the use if the money's used that way then it is going to cost you something and if, if if we did that i would i would uh sure hope that three elected officials would stand up and say that uh yes this is an increase in taxes and uh, we're going to bypass the uh usual procedure of asking for a townwide ballot vote 
and just to go through a simpler route with a smaller group of people to decide to raise your taxes because it's, yeah. it's it's clearly an increase in taxes. Um, if we have to use if we have to borrow anything more money, it's an increase in taxes. Um, the other the other interesting little thing that was said was this. Uh, you may remember uh, that there was a um, there was some thought being given to moving the sixth grade out of East Meadow over into the junior senior high school. And a lot of people were in favor, a lot of people were very much against it. But apparently we've been told by the MSBA that if we have a new project on the junior senior high school, and if the sixth graders are moved out of East Meadow into uh, whatever the project results from the new junior senior high school, that they will be coming to, uh, to uh, get back from us the money that was spent for the sixth grade under the East Meadow School, because they said they, they were, their theory is that they've already paid for our sixth graders. And they don't want to pay for to build a second facility for our sixth graders. So that uh, that's another thing that would have to be answered uh, right away, is because it affects the uh, cost to the uh, to the taxpayers. Is is this include or exclude the sixth graders in in the plan? Okay, quick quick question. Yep. Um, Let's say we spend the two million on a plan and we don't approve it right away. How long is that plan good for before we got to go back and spend the money all over again if we submit it in the future? Let's well, see. If uh, now this you're, you're asking, suppose that Granby decides to spend money on a feasibility study, right? And, uh, they come up with a feasibility study and submit it to the MSBA. And then the MSBA rejects the project. No, not that's not what I'm asking. We spend the money, but somehow we don't end up approving the project. So let's say, because right now I read your letter as okay, there's an opening right now. So we spend the money, that gets done, and then for some reason we don't go forward. I we remember in the past we were doing these school projects and then. We didn't vote for it, so then we had to start all over again after a certain point in time and spend the money all over again. So that's my question. Is that plan good for five years? Is it good for two years if we don't move forward? Or is it only good for this specific window here? I, I don't know, but I suspect that if you then, uh, you would miss this cycle. And if you go to the next cycle, then the MSBA would require you to go through the whole same process again. Now, if the whole same process resulted in the exact same study <laughs> being written um, and then came to the town and the second time the town approved, I don't know what the MSBA's attitude would be. I have no idea. It's an interesting question. Okay. Where does the uh, Board of Selectmen stand on all this? Do not know. And that they're certainly going to be uh, key if the question comes up are we in fact going to be raising taxes without asking for a uh, town ballot vote you know they 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 would have to be they would have to be saying well we we found a loophole where we can raise your taxes without asking you through the regular procedures uh, well i got to tell you man, the town is going to be really upset if we go that route i, mean, I would be so. a lot of people that are going to say you know, uh, yeah, you know that, push that. Not, that's not seem to be consistent with what a select board should be doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I see, you know, they have an opportunity, but, you know, it's like the cart before the horse. Shouldn't we find out if the town has an appetite for it before we? I, I would think so. I would think so. But the school committee is going to push this because they're saying we got this narrow window, so we got to go do it right now. And they want to get their thing done. And I would agree that, I mean, my view is that if you really look at the growth of the town and the number of students, I mean, that's a lot of money to spend on 800 students or 700, whatever it is, some low number, yeah. just to build a building. And then when we build it, then they're going to want to you know, upgrade the education system. And so we're going to need more teachers and, you know, we're oh, going to get into all that. I, I'm just going to go on the record and say that to me, the more prudent route is to seriously have the school committee seriously explore whether 
through choice or like you said earlier through regionalization or just through some arrangement with a specific town or two that we move the majority of our population you know we move the students to belcher town or south hadley or where you know whatever we could get done because it's just more economical and it's more and it gives the students more of the courses that they need because one of the biggest complaints right now is well everybody needs ap well we can't afford all these ap courses like when my you know when my daughters were in school like 20 years ago you know it's it's just different so and i don't want to build a building just to drive school choice so then we fill it up with all these students coming from the outside because the, uh uh the thing that i would worry about the town is this uh if a project has gone into without being without due consideration being given to what i think is the overwhelming probability that 10 percent tax increase would be rejected at the ballot yeah which means, not, which means first of all that all the work would be discarded and the cost would be borne by the town but second and more importantly it means that another three years have been wasted trying to figure out how to educate Granby's uh, students. And that three years would mean a lot because in three years, the high school could be falling down. And I do not think that no matter what happens to the high school in terms of deterioration, I do not think that the town is allowed to increase taxes without a vote at the ballot box. Right. No matter what. Wait a minute, John, wait a minute, John. You, keep say, you said that before. Let me, let me go back to my comments before. The, the ballot box would still be necessary for everything other than the cost of the feasibility study. Right. Okay, it's, it's just whether or not the feasibility study, the two million or three million, whatever it would turn out to be, whether that was could be paid for using the debt exclusion that's already there, or whether it would have to be paid out of taxes and somehow or other reduce the, reduce the override amount. So wouldn't they ask, have to ask the attorney on that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, ju I just raised it as, as an issue. It's it not really as a red herring, I, but just it, it's the, the implication that I got at the meeting was that, well, it isn't gonna cost us anything to do the feasibility study. We got the money right here. Well, the answer is we've got, we probably very easily have the authority to borrow the money, but whether we can pay for it with the old debt exclusion or not, is an entirely different story, but we didn't get into that and, and discuss it. But the, the whole point is that eventually, before any real project is done, that's going to have, take a ballot vote. No matter, no matter what machinations you can go through to get to that point, at that point, you have to have a ballot vote. And if the ballot vote doesn't work, then you've wasted three years in your process of trying to figure out what to do. And as I was going to say, anyway, let me continue where I was from there is that I did not think at that point that no matter what the condition of any building is, that the town has the right to increase taxes to pay for something unless the people vote for it. So then you're in a position where you've got a falling down building and you still have to educate the, the children. So what does that mean? Then people have to vote to, to do what? Temporary classrooms? Quite possibly. It seems that there are better options, but the last minute, another option might be to ask the state to take over the school system. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, doing that, then I still, I don't think that the state has the authority to raise taxes in a town. So they're going to be in the same situation, it's just they might be more motivated to try other solutions. So I, it, it's, this is really putting the cart way before the horse to just move into a, uh, a project to study the feasibility of, of renovating the uh, junior senior high school without having any idea at all whether such project has any hope of all passing. So what would it take to get a special town meeting and find out whether the town has an appetite for it? Well, a special town meeting is not the way to find out if the town has an appetite because a special town meeting can, uh, efforts can be made to uh, answer the question in the way that you want it answered with the appropriate number of people without, without, with, trying to forget the reality of that no matter what it says at town meeting, you've got to get a ballot box vote of more than I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, you know, it'd be like other other things. I wouldn't I wouldn't be at all surprised 
if you could get a town meeting, um, get enough of a crowd at a town meeting to get a two thirds vote to take out a stabilization fund. That's the same thing. You know, so it doesn't raise taxes today, but it raises taxes in the future for what you would be able to do with that money. So it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough question, but I hate to see it addressed in a way that ignores certain aspects of it. Okay, one question on the sixth grade, you know, the issue of, not, of insufficient classrooms, can that be remedied at that school by reducing the number of choice students? Probably not. Okay. So why did we I end mean, up with I mean, it? Is, it isn't that they've got too many classrooms. It's they have too many kids in special ed that require, they're doing the special ed in-house rather than farming the kids out, which is cheaper. But the mm -hmm. downside of that is that they've got, got to have more space for the one-on-one -on -one stuff that goes on. Hmm. Okay. So the space is a special ed issue. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what really creates the problem. Hmm. Well, I would agree. I think that before we spend money, the real study needs to be a commitment to talking to all of the other schools around here, the communities, looking at how many of the Granby students themselves, not the choice students that come here, but just the kids that live in town, a percentage of them are already going out of town. So what is that number? And then can that number, I mean, my preference would be Belcher Town. If, if we could do something, I mean, if both South Hadley and Belcher Town agreed, then my preference would be Belcher Town over South Hadley because I constantly read about one issue or another issue within the South Hadley education system. But I don't know if Belcher Town would be interested in that at all. But how would we even go about approaching those? I mean, wouldn't it require the school committee? And if they don't want to do it, then how do we, you know, how do we do a feasibility study of coming up with here's all of our other options and what is possible? Because I do know before we closed uh, the Hampshire Council of Governments, because we never got any revenue from anybody. <laughs> you know, we had to make a profit all the time and we had to pay $400,000 a year of retirement funds on top of that because the state assigned that to us. Um, I do know that in talking to one of the members that, you know, he said, hey, come up with a proposal and uh, I'm sure the school system would be willing to look at it. You know, so... I'm assuming that that kind of potential is there because everybody's trying to reduce their costs or generate more revenue, you know, so, so anyway. Oh, and the last thing is that if we do the feasibility study, then I would want to take a hard line about putting any extra money or having the school system just go ahead and go around us and vote the extra money for their annual program right there. I would want to reduce some of our costs by for one or two years, not giving them that extra money. I mean, the other thing that I was curious about, I started thinking about what other sources of income, um, are we gonna get, did we already pay the state the fine for not filing those four years at 380,000? Or is it that we owe the state that? Because I'm saying, if we could get that, if we already paid the state, if we get that 380 back, and last year, what was it? Didn't they overwrite us for 400,000? I don't remember the exact number. Those two things are $800,000 right there. You know, so I'm looking at ways of, you know, where do we generate that money for the feasibility study? If, you know, because to me, a feasibility study, I know they want a building plan study, but to me, a, a feasibility study, the first step would be, what are our choices? And do we have options, like you said? And that would be phase one of a feasibility study. And then if the decision was, well, you know, nobody wants to really cooperate, then what choice do we have but to try to pursue this? So I'm done.
John, going back to you, you mentioned school choice. School choice would not have anything to do with this issue as it would relate to solving it, solving it on our side. Because to do it, the students would be the ones who would have to make the choice, not the school committee or the superintendent. Well, no, I know, but we have all these choice students coming in from the outside. That's I a mean, different issue. I, well, no, I know. What I'm talking about is not our own students making their choice to go outside. What I'm talking about is how many students are we already? So when we build this new building, we're building it for a percentage of students that are coming in from the outside. But their families or their town is not being taxed to pay for this. So we're going to do this, and then we're going to try to fill it up, and so we're going to go out to other choice locations. You know? Um, no, no, that, that's not what I was talking about, Joe. I was talking about John's comment of one of the alternatives for educating our high school students would be through the use of school choice. School well, choice I, would not would not have anything to do with educating our kids. It could be what you're saying, Joe, that it could have an impact on on cost and and space and all that. Yes, that, that's true. Okay. Well, no, I know that our. I know that Granby residents have that choice and we have no impact on that, okay? But for the people that aren't doing choice, would then the decision, what if we made a unilateral decision and said, hey, we're closing the facility. Okay, you know, consider, we can't raise the money, we won't raise taxes. So you have no choice, but we have to ship all of the students out of town. Now, worst, worst case scenario, part of the high school becomes unusable. Mm -hmm. So, our choices are, well, we uh, double the size of the classes, mm -hmm. um, we stop offering different courses, you're down to reading, writing, and arithmetic, yeah. uh, and, uh, that's what, and, uh, and that's what we have. Uh, students would leave, mm -hmm. stay under those circumstances, they'd leave. Right. And that's not something that, and that's not something that Granby would do of its own volition. But that could be a worst case scenario, if the town is not going to agree to raise taxes by 10%, and something starts happening to the to the buildings. Uh, the fact that you have to educate students, and the fact that there are uh, guidelines, best practice guidelines for size of classes, does not mean that you have to offer that size class. Right. You got a class. You, if you have a, a hundred students as a, a freshman in high school, okay. You've got a class, two classrooms of fifty students. Everybody takes the same subjects. That's what our high school education is. And there, there are things that you could get forced into doing that you would never ever choose as an option if you were freely choosing to design your schools. Right. But if the option is you have to either entice people to give up their money or do that, well. You can imagine what that's going to be like for a uh, vote. Well, with yeah, the you, keep, you keep saying that no one will approve a 10% increase. What if they would? Well, you would well, certainly can, you would certainly get your early indication if you required an override vote in order to do the feasibility study. Yeah, that would be the way to go. That would be your early indication. Right, you, that would be the way to approach people people to vote for a, a two million dollar uh, increase in taxes uh, to do a feasibility study. If you couldn't even get them to do that, how would you expect to get them to vote for borrowing twenty five, twenty seven million dollars? Okay, and, well, maybe, and, and, well, and some progress then. Uh, to get to that point might take you more than the uh, what? month and a half between two months between now and, and April 29th. It might take a longer period of time to get people convinced to vote even for that. But that's that seems to me to be something that if you really think they're going to vote for it eventually, find out they vote for it now. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm not I'm not sure from the way that they were talking about the timing on everything, whether you're, you're interpreting it quite accurately or not. There was you some, know, they, they kept this round, that round. There's a round every year from what I gather. Yeah, apparently. And, and they aren't going to approve it. They, they, you have to have your application in by the end of April, but they aren't going to tell anybody anything until the fall. 
Right, right. That's what uh, uh, the impression that uh, I've had is that they've always had school. But I don't recall MSBA saying we're going to take a year off from funding building schools. But um, there could be other things about whether the, the, the regulations and rules that they set for who would be eligible to apply for funding could change. I don't know. But there, there certainly will, should be, you would expect there to be some funding. The amounts could change. It could be small amounts one year, another amounts. But apparently it wasn't even announced until January this year. So there, it, the MSBA would keep everybody nervous, I suspect. And I almost got the impression, the way Sullivan was talking, that oh, if you can't, we can't get it in this year, we can get it in next year. In other words, a year delay in all of this didn't seem like it was going to be the end of the world. I, I would hope not, because I think that the more the more time we spend on this up front, the easier it's going to be to have the town convinced that whatever option is chosen is, in fact, a workable, correct option. And right. I don't know what's going to happen between now and April 29th. Right. So, so the plan would be the thing to get moving on is to look at all the other options. Right. Before that, right. But get moving on it now, so that then, when you go to avoid the case, you said, "Look, here's what we've looked at. We've reached out. Here are the different options that we've looked at, so that people know that okay, you know." If you don't want to spend this money, then probably here's what's going to have to happen. And if you and if you're so emotionally committed to maintaining a Granby Junior Senior High School, like a lot of people talk about, um, then then you're going to have to be willing to ante up in your pocket. My biggest fear is that a project like this has to go to a bigger company, and if you look at what inflation has been in building materials, my gosh, I mean. 54 million could end up being 60 million dollars by the time we get started. And well, if you do that, I mean, I'm not really under control. You know, I don't know what my taxes would be, but you know, I mean, I'm not really excited about paying now that I'm in my quasi retirement years. I mean, I still have a business, but I'm not excited about paying 12 grand a year on my property taxes to the town. And the kind of you got a good point there because in the kind of economic environment that we're in, the trade-off between time and money is a real one. It's if you huge. want something done tomorrow, it's going to cost you a lot of money to outbid others for the supplies. If you don't want to spend that kind of money, then you're in line behind a whole lot of people who have a little more money than you do. Right. But that, but that makes the case for us to do it this year. I mean, if, if we think everything's going to keep going up and up and up, then get in now. Well, it's still going to go, what, whatever we think it's going to be this year when we start, If even if it's next year, it's going to be higher. And even if it's three years from now, it's going to be higher. So it really behooves us to evaluate everything else and slow it down for a year because we have to be smarter. Because I don't want to have to, you know, all these building materials and renovation and I mean, what else do we do? You know, I guess we could put up a Butler building. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to do, if you're going to do the same thing five years from now that you do three years from now, then yes. But if you take the extra time and you're able to come up with a different plan, then even though the unit cost might be more expensive, it could be less expensive overall and more palatable to uh, a voting population. Right, but I think the important thing for the voting population is to come up with some real choices so yeah. that then if they sit there and they make the decision, they'll realize that, okay, I got to pay the extra tax because this is what I want. We went out here, here's your choice. You know, here are, you know, hopefully we could come up with, you know, besides that, maybe two other options or three other options. And that's how you get people to come together, that's what I found in my sales. You know, I usually give people a maximum of three options, you know, two or three options, two options. And usually that results in a higher close rate for me when I'm selling different companies, you know, because then I, I get attuned to what their budget is. And I would say the same thing would, would happen here, that, that if we do our due diligence and we come up with a basic plan and we do it. Now, to me, I mean, I don't know, but, 
to me, I believe the school committee, which is all in on our own school and everybody else, there's probably going to be a lot of resistance to looking at those other options as opposed to just, you know, renovating our building. But I don't know, maybe they would be open to that. So. John, do you remember what the comments were relative to a group or a committee that the, I can't say whether it was by, formed by the school committee or just by the administration over there, but in studying and coming up with this as a, a way to go? No, I, no, I don't. I don't know. Because it, it, he mentioned something very quickly. I mean, he didn't dwell on it at all. But somebody had to make a decision that we want to do this. Hmm. And and the normal thing you have at that point in time to make that decision is you've got to have some information. Did the school committee vote to do this? <laughs> Good question. I, I don't know. They're, the school committee meets tonight, and I don't know what's on their agenda, whether this is on their agenda. Or, I'd like to... I'd like to hear what this, where this, if the school committee votes for it, what's the, what's the vote count? And if the select board votes for it, then what's the count there? I mean, that's. Well, well, it, uh, that, that of course would be very interesting, but uh, from a uh, point of view, our point of view, uh, a vote on the wrong question doesn't mean too much. If the question before another committee is, uh, should we do this or not? That's different from saying should we do A, B, C, or D. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding what the what the question proposed is, or what I mean, if they if they're looking the at this, is, should we should we uh, examine the renovation? Should we vote for renovating the junior senior high school, or should we not vote for junior, for renovating the junior senior high school? If that's the question, that isn't a valid question. Because one of the answers gives you no solution to your education problem. Mm -hmm. But I'm afraid that that's the question that's asked. Or the question people think they know the most about. Well, I think the reason I, I bring it up, John, is that I have my opinion of what we ought to do. Um, and I think I agree with putting the feasibility study out to an override to get an indication from the people in town if they're willing to spend the money. Um, but for them to make that decision, they sort of need to know why a renovation project might be, the, might be proposed. So, and, and all of that, I think, is predicated upon the fact that any uh, any alternative, and I think there really is only one alternative, um, any alternative is investigated before we get around to trying to renovate the place. Yeah, I know that. Go ahead, John. Uh, we, we should, we, we, the town should be taking a look at what are the possibilities? What are the options? And looking at the options. And it could choose one option, could even overwhelmingly choose one option, but that's not all that the town should be required to do. The town should be required to, to say, okay, here's the option that you want. What happens if that doesn't pass? What do you do next? What's the backup plan? If there is no backup plan, then, you know, that's no way to run a railroad. No way to run a railroad. I'm not so sure that having the school committee investigate alternate options is the way to go either. Well, that's why, no. that's why a, a feasibility study in itself would uh, encompass a, a wide group of people. But what we want is that same wide group of people to be the group that studies whether or not the feasibility study should be for renovating the junior high school, junior senior high school, or whether it should be for some other project. Yeah, but you, well, need, you need that wider group of people to make that first determination. Okay, one question. Nobody, no, nobody would want, for example, nobody would want, for example, the finance committee to be making every decision about school building without any input from anybody else. 
Correct. Nobody would want the finance committee to do that with input from anybody else. I'm not certain that a school building, a school committee is uh, any more reasonable for making that kind of decision all by itself either. I don't, I don't believe so either. I think, you know, they're committed to their current vision and that would be the existing school building. I, I don't see them wanting to look at these other options. I, I don't believe that they're motivated to do that. You know, I, but a feasibility study about the options of whether we should do that or not. I'm wondering if, you know, could we get a project for 50 or 75,000 from a consultant that would go out and say, here's all the options. Like, I don't know if it's real, but I know that, you know, remember governor Baker was always pushing, um, you know, uh, you know, independent private education. And, and I don't know, you know, I remember in, what was it, New Orleans, I read like 10 years ago when, when they were just gutting the existing education system. So, so you could have all of these small choice schools that were private, for profit, whatever they were doing. And uh, maybe what if we turn, I mean, maybe one of the options could be turning our school into that kind of school and maybe there would be monies for renovating buildings or doing that kind of thing to do that to have the town do it as an experiment I don't know you know but I've thought about that because then I thought if you're an independent school okay and you can do the right thing then you have some options you know maybe you become a school that although you emphasize the basics you emphasize languages not just English and that is a module and you emphasize these things you know like I looked at Montessori and they emphasize certain things you know you got the Chinese immersion school up there in Hadley that does something different so somebody that's an expert in this area you know maybe we could you know because we would want to hire somebody independent to do it then therefore it wouldn't be oh the fine you know the finance committee you know we assigned some people to do it and they did it and oh they're biased this way you know, we just need a realistic evaluation of, of what our choices are. And maybe as part of that evaluation, this consultant would be reaching out to Belchertown or South Hadley when they looked at those options and saying, you know, can we yoke with you? You know, Granby is looking at this and one of the things they're considering is because of the size of the population that, that you know, because... I don't believe there's money in regionalization. I don't think people want to regionalize like we you you know like we tried to do 30 years ago or whatever that was. I think they do things different today, you know. So, well, just remember that the interest payments on 25 million dollars worth of debt spread out over a period of time, and and a portion of which is sent to another school district sort of makes it maybe a sweet, little sweeter to take the kids in or to, and go through the go through to regionalization. You know, because really what we're concerned with is ending up with the educating the kids at the lowest cost. Yeah. Well, at the optimal cost. I don't think there's a lowest cost. Everything because the state measures, you know, I always hear, well, you guys don't spend enough money per pupil. You know, I said, because what are we spending? Fifteen or sixteen thousand now per student? I forgot whatever that number was. Oh, yeah, we're, and we're spending we're spending more than is recognized because of the accounting thing on retired teachers. Yeah, yeah. So we're spending a lot more than that. So it still makes sense. Again, my challenge is, where's the growth projection in town? I mean, how many new students are we actually going to get? You know, that I would mean, be part of the feasibility feasibility study. Correct. Correct. You know, so I sort of look at that and then I say, well. Wow, okay, you know, like I said, if you divide, what do we have, 800 and something, seven through 12 students in town, or seven, I forgot what the number no, that, is. That's K, all the way up is the 800. What, K through 12? Okay, that's right. So for four, so for four to 500 students in town, we're gonna spend $60 million to build a building. And not even all of those students are going to go to our school. And if you divide, because even though we say 54 million, I'm just adding roughly 10% right now because of inflation and stuff like that. Who knows what the number's going to be. So if you took 
500 students divided by $60 million, you're spending a heck of a lot of money per student just to put a building up and you haven't even invested in day-to-day -day operations. And so now if you're going to invest all that money in that, how are you going to make the school more attractive to everybody so that all the kids go here? You're going to have to offer all these other programs. So that means more teachers, smaller class sizes. I know when my oldest daughter, Christina, uh, was taking her AP classes, like AP English, there were six students in AP English. I don't know. There were like seven or eight students in AP math. I mean, I mean, the the population was very small, and so you don't really. So part of maybe that evaluation is well, by yoking with another town that's much bigger, our students are going to have more choices for AP and those important courses to help them get into college, for example. You know. So, so anyway, these are just ideas that are floating out of my head in terms of that but yeah I'm all for a feasibility study I'm all for finding somebody I'm all for spending the money to budget that before we go out and then do two million on a feasibility study for renovating the school I'm all for for a feasibility study to evaluate all of our options so so the, the feasibility study is just for renovating the school it's it doesn't consider any other options maybe no, maybe have, building a new school yeah. Okay. I, so it's th those two things. Yeah. Well, but it could be building a new school. It could be regionalization. It could be because this expert supposedly would come would understand better all the different kind of education options that are going on. But that's different I'm, from what what we're talking about here. No, that's no. What I'm talking about that exactly. I'm talking about a feasibility study where somebody comes in and we're not assuming we're doing a feasibility study just to renovate the building. We're doing a feasibility study to come up with all the options and all the choices and the trade-offs. Then we use that as a way to decide, okay, well, I guess we're really going to have to renovate our own building. So then we go to that feasibility study because that's separate than this feasibility. This feasibility study is only to, to determine what our options are so that we can make a much better choice and a smarter economic choice in terms of what we're going to do. Okay, first of all, the, this first step would not, I'm certain, would not be funded by the MSBA. Oh no, this that's wouldn't, correct. That's correct. but, but right. for all the money, I mean, that's why I raised the, the like the 380,000 or, you know, whatever money's out there. I mean, you know, you're spending this money, not on this feasibility study of 2 million, but you're spending it to hire a consultant to come in and evaluate and determine what all of our options are and what our trade-offs would be if we went in those directions. And if this is an option, you know, he would also be rating what's the viability? What's the viability that Belchertown would be willing to take 300 Grammy students? You know, maybe there would be good, you know, maybe it would be something there. I mean, I don't know, you know, but I just know Belchertown's a much bigger town. I mean, they got 16,000 folks in town now and they're still growing. So they're going to be like a Westfield in the next 15 years. So, so anyway, but that's what I would support. I would support that kind of study and that would get right to the thing. And I would want, and I would want that study completed within six months and presented, you know, if it could be done in four months, that would be great. So you could maybe do it at a town meeting or a second town meeting. But the idea would be that that these options would come from an independent source that has no vested interest in either renovating the school or shipping everybody out of town. It would be this independent person. These options would be presented to the town. I mean, you know, we've done this. We've studied this. And guess what? Our only choice is for us to spend, our best choice, we believe, is for us to spend all of this money to renovate. Or, hey, we've got other better options, you know, because by doing the independent thing, you know, there's still going to be the emotional issue. There's going to be a whole bunch, oh, my town, I need a Granby High School. I need Granby Sports. I need, you know, all of this kind of stuff, you know. Yet, I believe that bigger school systems offer our students in town 
more choices. And we can't offer those choices anymore. In the beginning, our biggest thing was small class sizes. But to run the budget, we've had to fill those classes up too. So you don't get that kind of attention. And we've had to reduce the number of, of educational options. And then hopefully, you know, the town would be able to make a decision and move forward in three years. And I'd be happy with that because <laughs> my grandson in three years will be going into the eighth grade, you know, and so we'll know. I mean, my daughter is considering, you know, when it comes to the school, she is, she works for Belchertown, my youngest daughter. And, you know, she's probably going to see if she can go choice to Belchertown because they're spending the money and they have the tax base. So, and we don't, and they have the student population. So anyway, I've said enough. So. I'll let you guys. All right. Uh, we're going to be asked to basically report our preliminary thoughts. Uh, and I agreed uh, in the meeting we had that uh, we would do that, that uh, we'd put something together uh, expressing our thoughts. Um, so, uh, Let's um, let's not uh, let's not uh, end this meeting, but let's what uh, adjourn it to a future date, and we'll take the time and put together some kind of wording on the thoughts that have come up today, and send it out to everybody, and then we'll have another meeting and see if we can uh, get some kind of agreement on what uh, a position, what, what this early position of the Finance Committee might be. Does that, does that sound reasonable to people? Or? Uh, that's fine with me. I just want you to know, though, um, in two weeks, I fly to Florida for a month because my dad's staying for the winter with my brother down there. He's like 91. So I need to go down and I'm going down to spend like a month with you. Oh, yeah, no, this would be, this would be within, this would be within a week. It'd probably be. Oh, okay. Okay. Probably, yeah. I leave on the 26th of February and I don't get back until the 22nd of March. So, so, yeah. I mean, they you guys can go ahead and make it, you know what my feelings are. They have know. Zoom in Florida. Pardon? They have Zoom in Florida. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's me true. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't have to, but. Uh, no, I could connect in. We you could meet from tonight. Um, how does that sound? Pardon? We could meet a week from tonight by Zoom. Uh, okay. And, uh, and discuss uh, and kind of draft that uh, I or I and Bob put together. Mm hmm How does that sound? Yeah. Well, I'm fine with that. More, more information that could be gathered before we're making a decision would be better. Understanding what ex more details of what the school is plan is and whether the select board is on board would be helpful to me. Yeah, I don't know if that exists yet. I well, don't know. Why, why are we sticking our neck out first? I, I don't understand that. Because, because Bob said, it's, the state has said that they want to know from uh, different groups. Yes. Okay, but why do we have to be first? Well, because we're the finance committee, man. We need to take the lead. Who cares if somebody yells at you? Well, we have to have, we a, have a plan a before we can vote on it. We yeah. have to have a, a, a viable like uh, proposal, not like an email with like three paragraphs. No. What we've committed to is putting together what our thoughts are on this, for things to be considered. We're not, we, we, we did not agree to make a recommendation as to uh, what the next step would be necessarily. Um, I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't say, well, here's what we are, here's what we are voting for, and we're not voting for anything else. We're, we're not, at, we're not at that stage. Yeah. And then we'll turn, yeah, if we go a different route, then we'll turn the old uh, the old junior senior high school into an Amazon facility. No. As I said, the, the school committee is- we've already, got, we've already got one on West Street. 
<laughs> the, uh, the school committee is meeting tonight and they had hoped that we would have had something that we could uh, present tonight uh, to talk about. I said, not possible. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I think activity is starting, but since this was just announced last week, um, you know, we don't, uh, we, we don't have to be first, we don't have to be last, but I think where we are is fine. I think we're ready, I think we're ready to throw ideas into the hat for the way this should proceed. Yep. You know, we got to, whether we do it first or whether we do it last, it doesn't make a lot of difference. We're, you know, we'll eventually hear what other ideas are. Uh, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, I don't want us to be the group that's holding everything up. You know, I, we're, we've been brought in early on this and that's fine. And I think we, I think we should proceed, you know, with, with the kinds of things we've been talking about. And yeah, there's some things which are not known, but we have to put that in, in, in into uh, some of the caveats around things that we've been talking about. We don't know what the situation is on how to fund um, the feasibility study. Um, that, that's a big thing. That's a big deal. If, if there's anything other than a two-thirds vote, take money out of stabilization funds, we don't know for certain and if anything else is possible. Yep. One thing's for sure, I think some there'd be some people would be very happy if we were to say that the Finance Committee is fully in favor of funding the feasibility study right now. Well, of course they would, but I'm not. I'm, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I am. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. That, that's what somebody would hope. Well, that's, <laughs> that's why they were trying to get. push you for an answer. Because they're looking at this binary view, yes or no instead of multiple options. Well, certainly. How, how would you feel if somebody wanted to do away with the housing authority? You, you'd be biased and you'd say, no, hey, that's not good. Hey, look, that's we're considering yoking with Amherst because then we would you'd get out of a job. Because then we would have options for psychological health because the state has been pushing these things. So the housing authority in Belchertown is under Amherst and the housing authority in Hadley is under Amherst and we've discussed it, but the local people don't want to do it, but we have other issues. And so we're considering that. I don't mind that. There would still be my elected board. It's just that we wouldn't have our own executive director. So we're looking at that every year. We're looking at that now as an option. So we'll be discussing that again in April and saying, well, what do we think? Should we go to them because they've reached out? They've told us what the benefits could be more efficiency and maintenance and all these other kinds of things. So the state is, has been encouraging that. So I guess that's regionalization of, of the housing authority. You still elect your own people like me, but you know we're only policy for our local thing. We have nothing over operations, that's VACD. Awesome. No. That's a very, I think that's a very good example for the following reason. We've been saying for years, or I've been saying for years at town meetings, saying out loud, Granby is a very small town that would like to do the things that the big towns are doing, not realizing you got to spend the money that the big towns are spending in order to do those things. I do not know, I don't know if anybody knows what the smallest town is in Massachusetts that has its own school system, K through K through 12. But I bet that there are uh, not a lot of towns that are smaller than we are. That are regional system. Yeah. And I, I don't know if we're gonna to have to be the ones to try to study that or whether the school department knows. I would hope the school department would know that, but they may not even know that. Well, but we should be able to look at that up is one line. of them. Huh? Hatfield is one of them. Yeah, small that has the full, full, Yeah, and Hadley does too, but Hadley's, tax base is entirely different than yeah. our tax base. So they aren't commercial. Right, and, and that's the kind of thing that a study should do is to show if there are smaller towns, I know there's smaller towns, but if there are smaller towns, how do they do it? Well, if you've got, if you have a way to put your tax base onto industry instead of onto people, that's one way you can do it. If you do it by not offering uh, advanced placement courses or not offering courses that uh, house five, six, seven, two students 
then that's the way that can be done. Um, you're not going to get you're not going to get small towns uh, running a school system the way the uh, big wealthy communities in Massachusetts run their school systems. You're not going to find a long metal school system in a town of 3,000 people. Right. And not saying that it's good or bad, but I think people ought to know and understand that aspect of the finances of it. That it's it's not money doesn't doesn't appear magically. All right. Uh, so is is a uh, is a week okay with everybody, or should we should we take a longer period of time? Or um, well, a week from now is fine with me. I mean, you're going to be doing some writing, right, John? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I I apologize, but I'm just too. <laughs> I, I'm too question. weak. As soon as I'm done here, I'm going to take a nap. You know. So, <laughs> no, but but if I can make some phone calls to some people, I'll try to look up. I'll try to do some research when I feel okay in the, in the next few days or whatever. Uh, you know, in the education department. I'll call my old college buddy. His uncle used to run the state education. Okay. Uh, you know, um, what, 10 right. years? Anybody, anybody has any pieces of information or any thoughts, get get back to me with them uh, and let me know. But uh, otherwise, I would say then let's let's uh, recess until next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Okay. You mean 2 22 22? Yes. 2 2 2 2 2. Two 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 two. Okay. And and, well, and hope that there are at least and hope that there are at least two options that would be considered by. <laughs> well, I think I believe there are three options. Yeah. But I can't wait till three. But I'll work. No, but I'll work through them. Thirty three. Thirty three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So do I need to make a motion to adjourn? No, no, no. We're going to make a motion to recess until next oh, Tuesday. So I need to make a motion to recess until next Tuesday night at uh, right, seven o'clock. Seven. Okay, I make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. A any further discussion on that? No. If not, then all in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.